Good morning. Welcome to Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, our online service. Uh, we are grateful that you have chosen to join us this morning. We hope that you are prepared, not only physically that you have your Bible and ready to engage, but also spiritually that you have spent time in prayer asking uh, God to maybe remove anything in your heart that may prevent you from hearing from him today and that the spirit would be able to teach you. The whole goal behind this is that we grow not only in our understanding and knowledge of scripture, but that we grow in the likeness of Christ. And so when we open God's word, we need to be ready to uh, engage and allow the spirit to teach us this morning. A couple of things before we get started, I do want to remind you that uh, we uh, started our Wednesday night services back this past Wednesday, just a few days ago. And this morning, we have started our Sunday school classes back. And so I know several of you have, are not yet uh, comfortable enough to come back. And I just want to encourage you to to know that uh, we love you, we miss you, and we're also ready to see you. And when you're ready, we hope to see you. We're still practicing our guidelines as far as social distancing and mask wearing. Um, and so we do hope to see you soon, but we completely understand why you're not here. And we're just thankful that you can gather with us through um, watching this service with us on YouTube. So we love you. We hope to see you soon. Before I pray to start our service, uh, I do want to remind you that this is our uh, month where we emphasize our Dixie Jackson offering. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to have more information available uh, as far as where all that money goes, but it stays in state. It, a lot of it will go through uh, church planning, collegiate ministry, disaster relief, just to name a few of the things that we can be a part of and help in our state spread the gospel, not only here in Arkansas, but throughout America and ultimately the world. And so would you be praying for that offering? Be praying on how you may give and participate in that and also for our church as we try to reach our goal and also just to help be uh, gospel faithful people to give generously and to see what God can do with that. So uh, let me pray for us and then we're going to jump back into our series on Psalm 23. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for technology and that we are able to come to you uh, together, even though we may not be physically together. Father, we ask that as we have gathered, as we have prepared and are ready to engage your word, that you speak directly to us, that you draw us close to you, that you help us to find not only our contentment, our satisfaction in you, but also our comfort. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus, who is our good shepherd. And it is his name we pray. Amen. We are continuing our look, our closer look at Psalm 23, where we kind of re-examine this familiar passage and see how God can continue to use it uh, today in our lives, maybe outside of a certain setting that we're mindful of this passage. Last week, we looked at the idea of contentment, where David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or I have all that I need. And so true lasting satisfaction comes through a relationship with Christ alone. He is our good shepherd. And his contentment is one that uh, not only satisfies, but it ironically won't leaves us wanting more. We want more of him, more of his word, more of this joy that we can only find in him. And so today we're gonna to be looking at verse four. It's kind of the midway between uh, this passage. You remember it's broken up kind of into two sections. The first, David focuses on God as his shepherd. And then the last two passages that we'll look at next week, he focuses on God as his host. And so what we're going to be looking at today is the idea of comfort. He says in verse four, he says, even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Now we all, just like contentment, we want to be, uh, find ourselves in a place of comfort. We want to be comforted, whether that be physically, financially, spiritually, whatever the case may be. We all have things in our life that bring us comfort, that bring us peace. That may be just being with family. It may be a TV show, like I mentioned last week, watching, uh, Thundercats and how that brought some nostalgic comfort into my life. We probably all have comfort foods that we know we probably shouldn't be eating, but we continue to eat anyway. Most of you know I've been home recovering from an Achilles surgery, and so uh, 
with Melissa being at work, I'm kind of cooking on my own during the day. And, and so there's only a certain few, um, a certain amount of things that I can really cook without having full use of both legs. And so I'll roll into the kitchen and roll out and uh, I've been eating a lot of cereal. I've been eating a lot of things I can cook in the microwave, but one specific item that I've been eating a lot that brings me comfort and it takes me back with that nostalgic effort again is SpaghettiOs. Most of you probably ate SpaghettiOs when you were a young child and I continue to eat them today. In fact, I had um, some for lunch today. And uh, because I'm not able to drive or really go and get things that I would need, I can place an order through Kroger and either Melissa can pick up that order or have it delivered. And so I think I've done that three times and every order I've had SpaghettiOs. They, they comfort me. They're easy. Uh, in fact, if you look on the can, it says 20% of your daily required vegetables. And for me, I get about 20% of vegetables a day and that usually comes from eating SpaghettiOs, but they bring comfort to me. We, uh, maybe it's a place, it's a friendship, maybe it's a TV show as I mentioned earlier. But for us, we, we want these things because of what they do for us. My cousin, when he was younger, and I'm assuming he doesn't do this anymore because he's in his thirties, he had two pillows that he would take with him everywhere. If he was spending the night somewhere, he had these two pillows and they were named Lily and Lulu. They brought him great comfort. In fact, most of us would agree it's hard to go to sleep if we're not comfortable. And so sometimes comfort brings us a peace that we depend on. And it's a feeling that a lot of times we chase after. We chase after it and because of what it does for us and the fact that we want it more and more, just like in contentment. And so that's kind of where David is shifting in this psalm this morning. In fact, it's not the only shift in the topic, but we also see a shift in the pronouns, really. If you look at verses one through three, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Now listen when we get to verse four. It says, even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. He shifts from third person and he says, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so David was, uh, in verses one through three, really just describing who his shepherd was to him. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I want. Why? Because... He lists things that his shepherd has done for him and is continuing to do for him. And now he writes from even a more personal perspective and says, even when I go through dark times, you're with me. You. It's not just he is my shepherd, but you are my shepherd. And so this morning, I want us to look at that idea of comfort, but see it through the lens of David as he is writing this psalm for us. And the first thing, that he mentions in verse four, he says, even when I go through the darkest that he's not saying if I go through difficult times, he's not saying, I sure hope I don't, but just in case I do, but he is guaranteeing that he is going through it, that we are going through it. Jesus himself said, we will go through difficult times. We will be persecuted. They hated him. They'll hate us. We face dark times. And one of the biggest lies that many of us have believed is that the moment we accept Christ, that all difficulties will leave, that life will be easy, that the road will be smooth, and that all we really need to do is just trust him and life will be hunky-dory. Well, we all know that that couldn't be further from the truth. We know that we, that we will, we have, we're going to go through difficult times. In fact, some of you may be going through some dark times right now. But David says that we will go through. In fact, as we read last week, these paths, the green pastures, this path to the quiet waters, oftentimes, if not most times, those paths go through the dark times. They go through these valleys. And I love how David words it in the CSB. He says, even when I go through. You know, he's not saying that he is stopping in it. He's not saying that that is the end. He's saying, I'm going through it. King James Version says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so dark times, 
difficult times, trials, tribulations, whatever the case may be, however we want to word it, we're going to go through those. Sometimes they're because of our own sinful mistakes. Sometimes they're because of things that we have done, but then sometimes it's simply out of our control. We trust that God is sovereign, that everything's going to work itself out. But this does not only give us comfort as we go through these difficult times, but as believers, it gives us comfort as we face death. Listen to what uh, Charles Spurgeon wrote on this passage. He said, Yea, though I walk as if the believer did not quicken his pace when he came to die, but still calmly walked with God. To walk indicates the steady advance of a soul which knows its road, knows its end, resolves to follow the path, feels quite safe, and is therefore perfectly calm and composed. The dying saint is not in a flurry. He does not run as though he were alarmed, nor stand still as though he would go no further. He is not confounded nor ashamed, and therefore keeps to his old pace. We understand that death as believers is not final. In fact, most of us, when we think of the 23rd Psalm, specifically this passage, we probably go back to a time where we have heard it read at a funeral or at a graveside service uh, as we grieve over the loss of a loved one. But we understand that death is not final. Spurgeon would go on to say that death is not the house, but the porch, not the goal, but the passage to it. And so we are not to fear death because of what it leads to. And that's why David uses the word shadow. That's why it's just a, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you see that darkness is temporary. That struggle is temporary. And regardless if it's just facing a difficult time that we find ourselves in, or regardless if we are on our deathbed, we know that there is light on the other side. We know that God is using this trial, this difficulty to work something significant in us, strengthen our faith and draw us closer to him. Speaking on the shadow, Spurgeon said, the shadow of a dog cannot bite, the shadow of a sword cannot kill, the shadow of death cannot destroy us. Let us not therefore be afraid. We see this in the second part of verse four. David said, even when I go, go through the darkest valley, he says, I fear no danger. Why? He says, for you are with me. Isn't it amazing to know that, that even when we go through these dark, difficult times, we may seem like we're alone. We may seem like there's no hope, but we are not alone. That God is with us. Our shepherd is with us each and every step of the way reminding us it's okay, I'm with you. Don't be afraid, don't be scared. We do not go through these difficult times alone. We don't fear the valley of the shadow of death because we are not in that valley alone. The comfort comes not from a lack of evil. The comfort comes not from knowing that this valley is dark, but maybe it's not that evil, but the comfort comes from the presence of God. The comfort comes from knowing that no matter how discouraged, disappointed, depressed, dark it may be, that we are not alone. And that is one of the most powerful truths that we can take, not only from this passage, but from this overriding theme of scripture that we see from the beginning to the end, that we're never alone, that God is always with us, regardless of what we do. God is with us and we need to look for him. We need to keep our eyes on him. We need to trust that he is with us and trust that he is working, that he is providing and trust that no matter how dark it is, that he is with us. And we see this in 1 John 1, 5. John writes, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. What a beautiful thought. That no matter how dark our circumstances, our surroundings may be, that God is light, that there's no darkness in him. And so we see that we are going to go through difficult times, but we also see here that we are not going to go through them alone. And the third thing is that as we go through this valley of the shadow of death, that we have comfort. 
we have comfort. Look at what he says. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Comfort. Again, this whole idea of we can be comforted. We find this in this passage here. David says, I'm going through it. You can guarantee you'll go through it. It's dark. It's difficult, but you are not alone. And not only are you not alone, but you have the comfort of your shepherd available to you. And what we see here, he says, I fear no danger for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And these are two tools that every shepherd would have. Sometimes they were two separate tools, but then sometimes they may have just been one. But regardless, they are tools of protection and tools of guidance. As we go through the dark times, we are protected from all evil. As we go through these difficult times, and maybe it's so dark that we can't even see where our next step needs to go, we have guidance available. He mentions his rod. And uh, sometimes shepherds would carry these club-like rods that they would just kind of stick in their belt until they were needed. They were used for defense and they were used also for discipline. If they saw a wild animal coming towards them and they were maybe off a little bit of a distance, it was a short enough rod where they could throw it. It had a, a club-like ball on the end of it where they could use it to hit animals with, to hit snakes to uh, knock things out of the way, whatever the case may be. It was used to defend his sheep. But sometimes his rod was used as discipline as well for the sheep. Sometimes the sheep would continue in these habits as we looked at last week, that they were stubborn animals, that they would get themselves in these habits and they were hard to break on their own. So a shepherd lovingly would use this rod as a form of discipline. And for us, this is a reference to the word of God that we have readily available to use, to reference, to go to. Whether we need uh, defense as Jesus used it in his defense against his temptations with the devil in the desert, or if we need it to uh, just fight sin in our daily battle. Psalm 126 verses 6 through 7 says, I mean, sorry, Psalm 12 verses 6 through 7 and the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us from, pr protect us forever from the wicked. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out for, by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness in Romans 15.4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. And so we have this rod available, this uh, sword of the spirit, as we see in, um, in the book of Ephesians. We have this available for us, readily available to use daily. And so how well acquainted are we with God's word? Can we recall these promises like Jesus did as he was facing temptation? Can we use them as our source of hope, as our source of joy to bring us comfort in the dark times that we have? These are literally, as we read, the inspired word of God breathed out by him onto these pages through the hands of these authors for us to use in our defense, but also as he uses to discipline us, to correct us in our ways. Second thing is mentioned that brings comfort is the staff. And this was a long pole. You've seen these. Maybe this is the image you come across when you think of a shepherd. It's almost like a candy cane shape with a crook at the top. It's a long pole. This was used specifically for guidance. In two ways, it would direct the sheep, but it would also draw a sheep back using that crook. Sometimes there's comfort in knowing that we're going the right way. And so sometimes a shepherd would even just place his staff on along the side of a sheep that maybe was a little nervous, maybe a little anxious. And that sheep knew that when he felt that staff, that it was the presence of his shepherd was right there with him, walking with him. Sometimes it was a, a sheep that would stray a little bit like we all do. And the shepherd would lovingly reach that staff out and use that crook to put it around the body of the sheep or around the neck of the sheep and gently draw them back in. 
Just as the rod was the word of God, the staff is the spirit of God given to us to guide us on our journey as we go through the dark valleys. John chapter 14, verses 15 and 17. Jesus is right, is speaking here. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. And so not only are we not alone, but we have the spirit of God dwelling inside of us, convicting us, guiding us, comforting us. John 16, 13 through 14, Jesus again, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How comforting has the word of God been to you? How comforting has the leading and the guiding of God's spirit been to you? If you have your Bibles, you can flip over to the book of First, um, Second Corinthians and uh, I want to read verses three through seven to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as the suffering of Christ overflows to us, so also through Christ our comfort overflows if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that as you share in the suffering, so you will also share in the comfort. Something that we need to understand about God's comfort is that he comforts us, not just for us, but he comforts us so that we can comfort other people. His comfort is readily available to us through his word and to his spirit, even when we go through the dark valleys. And it is there so that we can be comforted, but also that we can use that to comfort someone else. Because I guarantee you have never gone through something that nobody else has gone through. Everything that we go through, there has been somebody else who has gone through it or somebody that will be going through it. And so what we receive in these dark times, the comfort that we have, we need to pass on to others. And again, as he says that for just as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so also through Christ, our comfort overflows. And so this comfort that we can have is overflowing. And the idea of it is that it overflows onto other people. And so we are to point people to Christ key truth for this passage today is that not only does our contentment come from a person, so does our comfort. And that person is Jesus. Trust him. Walk with him. Understand that he is with you regardless, no matter how difficult it may seem, that he is with you every step of the way. Roger Ellsworth in his commentary on the book of Psalms wrote, we cannot have what the shepherd produces without having the shepherd. If we want to enjoy the full measure of David's peace, we must have the full measure of his faith. We must recognize that we desperately need a shepherd. We must recognize that only God can rightly shepherd us. And we must wholeheartedly turn to God, renouncing our reliance on ourselves and on any other shepherds. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me be beside the quiet waters. He renews my soul and he leads me along the right paths. Even when I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Is that true for you? Have you found comfort in God as your shepherd? 
in Jesus as your good shepherd through his word and through his spirit. It is available for you and it is a comfort that is meant to overflow, meaning that it is with you always, regardless, and that it is meant to overflow on others so that we can point them to the person of Jesus and to what he did for them and for us on the cross. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that it has, Father, for pointing us to the cross, for allowing us to see that our hope is in you alone. And so, Father, as we are kind of digesting this message, help us to see how it relates to where we are in this very moment in our lives. See, Help us to see how this comfort is something that we so desperately need and it can only be found in you. Father, for those of watching and for us, Father, here at church, maybe we're going through some difficult, dark times right now. And may we just feel your presence, the calming presence of your Holy Spirit. Father, may we find comfort in the promises that we have in your word. And may we stay focused on you, understanding that we are walking through it, that this is not the end. And so we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being our good shepherd. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again for being a part of our service this morning. I do ask that you continue to pray for us as a church as we try to seek some normalcy and seek uh, the Holy Spirit's guiding us as a church as we kind of start some things back. We do look forward to seeing you soon. If we can do anything for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We love you, we miss you, and we hope to see you very soon. Have a great rest of your day.